Fartela duro! 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 Capra ignorante! Hello guys and welcome back to the 33rd episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik and I make weekly videos on Italian history and politics in English. Last time we talked about Giorgio Almirante, the founder of the neo-fascist party MSI, who slowly came to love democracy after he realized that fascism was never ever coming back. Today we are talking about Carlo Calenda, former Minister of Economic Development, founder of Azione and the Liberal candidate for mayor of Rome. Calenda owes his popularity to his irony and acknowledgement of trends and memes, which makes him very popular with the young people. What also stands out about him is the fact that he is politically isolated. The other parties, at least the big ones, don't give him much regard. Action is his personal party project that pushes for a pragmatic, liberal centrist outlook on the Italian situation. Before I elaborate, let's have a look at who is Carlo Calenda. Calenda was born in 1973 in Rome. He came from a family of filmmakers and actors, and for that reason, when he was just 11 years old, he appeared on the TV series Cuore. Being a child actor, though, didn't fit him. He graduated in law in the late 90s, right before working as a financial consultant, and later as manager in Sky TV, Ferrari, and even in the General Confederation of Italian Industry as an assistant for President Luca. Cordero. By this point, Calenda had shown a lot of interest in politics and had been pretty open about his progressive stances, especially on social issues such as civil unions and the legalization of light drugs. However, he only stepped into the arena in 2013 when he ran for parliament on a civic list, although without getting elected. However, Letta took notice of his skills in law and economics and therefore he nominated him deputy minister of of economic development, a title he kept until 2016, until Gentiloni came along and promoted him Minister of Economic Development, a title he kept until the last election in 2018. He will join the Democratic Party in 2018 and run for the European Parliament in 2019, where he won a seat. During his European campaign, Calenda put his political skills to the test by taking charge of the Democratic Party's official list, which took a strong anti-populist stance and got respectable results despite the situation the party was in at the time. Things got the wrong turn in the summer of 2019, when Conte's first cabinet fell apart and the Five Star Movement asked the Democratic Party for a truce and to join forces. Calenda, being the anti-populist that he was, said he would leave the party if such alliance took place and, as we all no, it did take place. It was then when Calenda gathered his handful of supporters in parliament to make Azione, the liberal progressive party that plans to fix the state budget for the better. How exactly? How about we take a look at Calenda's political compass? Calenda is progressive socially but slightly right-wing economically. He wants to implement budget reforms that reduce old age pensions as well as most if not all the useless financial burdens passed by the Five Star Movement, such as the citizen income and all that stupid bonuses. He plans to use that money in education and welfare and wants to pass laws that ease the creation of businesses and their growth. He is a social liberal slightly more left-wing than Renzi. Calenda has been consistent throughout most of his career, except for one major discrepancy. In 2018, he was once asked if he will ever consider running for mayor of Rome, and to that he said, oh no, that's not what I want to do, if I run for mayor of Rome, I will be a scoundrel, and therefore I will not. Fast forward to late 2020, and here you see him announcing his candidacy. He was the first to do so. Now, despite 
accept this clear blunder, running for mayor isn't exactly a bad choice, even if he loses. Rome is the capital of Italy, so being mayor of it doesn't just come with great responsibility but also lots of fame. By running this early, Calenda not only gained a huge margin of time to do his campaign, but he also made sure to associate his name to the elections. For real, before May, whenever people talked about Rome, its issues and the upcoming elections on the news, journalists reported on mainly three aspects. Whatever Raji was doing, whatever Calenda was doing, and that the main parties still haven't picked their candidates. This gave him a huge boost in popularity. He will go around every neighborhood, poor and rich, to talk to the people about their issues and about how they felt so abandoned by, by the Raji administration. Polls attribute to him a percentage margin be between 12 to 25 percent, which is a lot, but the more trustworthy polls put him around 20 percent. Romans have great respect for Calenda, also for the carry put in the city while he was in government with PD, but the latter doesn't seem to care for him very much. When Azione asked for the Democratic Party's backing, the secretary was a certain Nicola Zingaretti, who is also the president of Lazio, the region where Rome is. His acknowledgement would have given Calenda a huge electoral and financial boost, not to mention the symbolic significance of such candidacy. Calenda, just like he had done in the European elections, could have been the pro-Europe candidate fighting against the populists. But Zingaretti decided to let this opportunity pass. Now the democratic candidate is a certain Roberto Gualtieri, who has a very similar background to Calenda. He was a member of the European Parliament and was Minister of, e of Economic Development from 2019 up until a couple of months ago. He is okay, although he feels a bit out of place, like if the PD just put him there to spite Calenda. The center-right candidate uh, is this other guy called Enrico Michetti, who is a lawyer with a lot of potential, at least according to most polls, that show him around uh, at 30%. But again, people seem to vote for him because Meloni likes him. Now, all of you are probably wondering if I think Calenda is going to win, and while I think it is a bit too early to tell, there is something I want to say. Calenda's results, at least for now, are impossible to predict for certain because polls are a bit all over the place. However, I think he has a pretty good chance due to the Roman electoral system. Basically, the system works like this. The election is often divided into two turns. The first voting session is a race for who can reach the 50% mark. If, let's say, Michetti gets 51% at the end of the counting, then Michetti becomes mayor and that's it. However, if not Nobody reaches the substantial majority of the votes, which is often the case, and only a relative majority is reached, then the two most popular candidates will go on to what we call a ballot. Michetti is most likely going to be getting the most votes on the first turn because he has all the right-wing parties and voters are under his wing, while Calenda, Gualtieri and Raggi will be fighting among each other for the support of the left-wing voters. If Calenda somehow managed to become the most popular left-wing candidate, he will face Michetti at the ballot, where all the left-wing voters will elect him. We are talking about something like Calenda getting 60% and Michetti 40%. This scenario is far from being outside the realm of possibility, and I truly hope he makes it. Although, for now, Gualtieri seems to be the one more likely to be backed by the whole Roman left-wing train. That's it for today. What do you think of Calenda? Would you actually vote for him if you lived in Rome? I probably would, I'm not going to lie, but honestly, all the main candidates have their merits, even Raji. So I think it's going to be a very entertaining election. I hope you guys enjoyed, I will see you next week.